Today, you all are going to do 8.3 part 2. So let's remind ourselves of what we did yesterday. Yesterday, we started task 8.3, and all of the trinomials and binomials that we were factoring had a common factor that could be pulled out, and then you could factor the problem. Today, we're still going to be factoring trinomials, um, but we won't necessarily be using the same process that we were using yesterday. So we're going to start by looking at page 14, number 5. The children, so again, we're with Quanika and her quilts. The children keep coming up with new and interesting requests. One option is to have rectangles that have side lengths that are more than 1x. For instance, one child made a drawing of this cool block. Write two equivalent expressions for this block. Use the distributive property to verify that your answer is correct. So let's set the timer for about three minutes. Pause the video. Attempt number five on your own. Don't move on to number six. Only do number five. And then when that three-minute timer is up, go ahead and press play on the video, and we'll go over it together. Okay, so you should have done number five. When we look at this box, we know that the squares have side lengths of x and the rectangles have side lengths of 1. So this side would be like x plus 2 and this side would be x plus x plus 1. So one side length or one factor will be x plus 2. The other side length is going to be x plus x plus 1 which simplifies to 2x plus 1. So we have x plus 2 times 2x plus 1. That would be one of the equivalent expressions. Now we want to use our FOIL method to simplify this. So x times 2x gives us 2x squared. x times 1 gives us x. 2 times 2x gives us 4x and 2 times 1 gives us 2. We can simplify that further by combining our like terms here to get 2x squared plus 5x plus 2, which is equivalent to that x plus 2 times 2x plus 1. One thing that I want to point out here is that even though this beginning term, our x squared, has a coefficient of 2, that 2 is not a common factor, so we cannot pull it out because this 5 is not divisible by 2. So the problems that we do today are going to be a little bit different from yesterday in that there isn't going to be a common factor, but you're still going to be trying to find new factoring patterns. Today you're going to be doing number 6 through 9. For number 6, there's three parts. They have given you one of the side lengths to make it a little bit easier for you to find the other side length given this formula. So I would start by drawing a diagram with the given side length and then trying to figure out what the other side length should be so that when it's multiplied by the given side length, you get the area. Equivalent expression for the area, you want to have your two factors multiplying by each other and it should be equivalent to the formula that's given to you for the area or the expression given to you for the area. We're going to take about seven minutes by ourselves. Once that timer goes off, you can work with your groups, and I will have a video explaining this task for you to watch at the end of class. 